Another um, affordable uh, housing question. Um, with so much of uh, Hawaii's residential real estate being bought by non-residents and corporate investors, how do we prevent them from, from driving the cost of our housing up? All right, the first person to take Doug's question is James. Yeah, so uh, the issue with non-residents um, specifically, it's, you know, it's, it, it would be unconstitutional to say that they can't purchase property here. Um, so that is a, a difficult one. And But when it comes to the corporate investors, yeah, uh, there's other uh, states out there that have passed legislation to prevent like BlackRock from buying up whole communities and, and selling them as rentals. Um, you know, pretty much taking away the American dream from our generation. Um, and there, so you can do that. You could legislate that corporate entities couldn't uh, purchase property or it would be limited. Uh, I would prefer they just couldn't because it's unfair. Uh, when it comes to non-residents, uh, let's just say, uh, you know, retirees in California want to move to Hawaii and they have all kinds of money because they were in the tech industry. Um, it would be hard to bar them from, you know, purchasing property. Maybe there could be some sort of uh, extra tax added on. But to be honest, that's something I'd have to work with like the AG's office on and the tax department and see what exactly we could do in that in that area. All right, thank you, James. Tina, you're up next. Thank you. Um, I work currently at a National Policy Institute on housing, and I, I'm really excited about some of the ways that other states and cities are trying to address this same issue, which, you know, is the most intense here in Hawaii. Um, I think that first off, we can curb outside speculation by exploring targeted increases in property taxes for non-owner occupied units. We could do that by cost or by how many units you own. Um, of course, we can increase enforcement of short-term vacation rentals and work to phase them out like Maui is doing. We can establish vacant homes tax and mansion taxes and use those funds um, for rental relief programs or down payment assistant programs for local people. Um, those are all sort of part of the policy conversation already, but some new ideas that I really want to bring to the table are things like state support for community ownership. We can pull housing units out of the speculative market permanently if we create things like community land trusts and limited equity co-ops. And we see some of that work being done now in Lahaina, and there's so much more our state could be doing to support that. Um, we can establish community and tenant opportunity to purchase programs. So when all of those old walk-ups in Mo'ili'ili go up for sale, the tenants are empowered and supported to purchase those units instead of a big developer who's going to buy up the whole block and build a luxury high rise. Um, and we could create a public land bank to facilitate that kind of work. Um, and we can also get creative on a smaller scale. Places like Colorado are um, implementing deed restriction incentive programs. So the um, town of Mountain View will actually pay owners a portion of their home's value if those owners put a deed restriction on their property so that it remains permanently affordable and accessible only to the local workforce. All of those things are really exciting stuff we could be doing right now. And I'm, I hope that we do. Thank you very much, Tina. John, you're next. Thank you. We have a compelling state interest. 40 years ago, one out of every five Hawaii high school graduate moved to the mainland. Today, that statistic, one out of every two. It is a compelling state interest to keep local residents here in Hawaii. That's the standard as a practicing attorney, the constitutional standard for having protectionist laws. I would propose a right of first refusal. Right of first refusal is to allow the local residents first crack at any property that comes on the market. That's not gonna be fixed for all, for everything. I do like what Tina had proposed and it's a complex issue and it's not a one, you know, law solving kind of issue. 
But that's what I would pr propose if elected into the office. The right of first refusal for local residents. The standard uh, is the compelling state interest. And that case came out of a uh, main state where they were protecting little shiners, which are bait fish, freshwater bait fish. And the state had a compelling state interest to protect a unique indigenous species of fish. How much more compelling is it to keep our children at home? Thank you. Thank you very much, John. So Kevin, you're next, please. So I, I have a lot of ideas with this, honestly. Um, uh, <laughs> I've actually already written a vacant homes tax bill. Uh, unfortunately, it never saw the light of day because on paper it's a it's a blanket tax or property tax increase, and um, people have some problems with it. Uh, but you know, for me, I, I look at a whole bunch of things that uh, affect the price of homes. For me, uh, one of the bigger things is our our current uh, affordable housing program. It has become so difficult to work with that a lot of developers have decided to forego the, the opportunities with building high rises and they invested in residential, you know, single family homes. And um, a lot of that money is, is, is going to increase the prices of, of our lots. It's gonna take away opportunities for our local residents. And, you know, without uh, some very complicated uh, changes to prevent private business owners from doing what they wanna do, um, there's only a few things that I can think of that will will come to work. And uh, so for me, one of the things that I want to focus on is is bringing up, lifting up residents to the point where they can actually compete. You know, we're we're constantly fighting against people coming from the mainland who uh, have lower costs of living, uh, higher salaries. And um, when you combine those two, they've been able to save up and we haven't. Um, they're getting outbid even when it comes to to normal people uh, from outside the state, and and that's something that has has really caused some problems. You know, uh, I've seen a lot of my friends leave. Um, I'm lucky. The only the only reason that I can be here for the most part is because I live with my grandparents, uh, my grandparents, my uncle, my cousin, and my brother, all in the same house, and um, it's it's frustrating. Sorry. Thank you, Kevin. Kareem, your answer, please. Well, coming from um, a philosophy of less government is better and government reform is how we dig our way out of this, I would have to say I disagree with a lot of the ideas. I do have some ideas of my own. Um, I've, I've read that it backfires if you raise taxes on homes of people who, who come here from outside. And you have to keep in mind that the people who are coming from outside usually can afford to pay those taxes. So it's not that big of a deal for them. And if they can't, they're going to sell that property to somebody else. Um, there was a house minority bill last year that didn't make it through that I would support. And that increased the um, tax-free amount you could add to your down payment savings account. So I like that idea. Um, I, I, I honestly do think we need to peel back some of the reforms. I think that requiring a, a certain amount of units to be uh, affordable housing, the developers that I've talked to um, say it's just not tenable, that, that that has to be lowered. So I think we do, even though I'm not a corporation person and I, I'm for the people, I think we do have to listen to their side of the story and try and work with them to get um, make it easier for them to develop and I also think we need to really look at the zoning and give up some of the some of the land and use it for residential building. I think it's going to take some some drastic measures. We are in a crisis, and I think we have to kind of shift about how we look at doing things. Thank you very much. All right, all right, Doug. The next question is yours. Okay, quick question and uh, kind of um, it, uh, off the usual track here, seeded lands. Uh, the seeded lands issue came up, use of seeded lands came up during the Mauna Kea TMT issue, but now uh, it surfaces as um, a controversy about whether military, 6,000 acres of uh, the military uh, lands here 
Kahuku Kavailua Pomoho and Makua has come up. Um, what is your position on the um, renewal of these military visas? Uh, okay, so I am uh, personally opposed to the renewal of the military leases um, in Kahuku, Kapailoa, Pomoho, and Makua. Um, I've been heavily involved in sort of uh, getting our community prepared for the decision-making process coming up ahead. But, you know, on a professional level, I think that uh, it, it, it should be the community's decision, the uh, the communities adjacent to those military lands um, that weighs in the most on this issue. Um, and, but ultimately, um, so one of, I worked for the representative for Wahiwa and one of those parcels is in one of those training areas. It was in our district. So we got to visit it. Um, it hasn't been used for active uh, live fire training for decades. Um, and it won't be, I think a real, problem with the the lease renewals and the military's position is that part of the reason they don't want to return the lands is because they don't want to have to clean them up. And to be clear, they have paid a dollar um, for these leases for 69 years. And while we're paying exorbitant rates for our living, for our cost of housing, for to just have a, sh a roof over our heads, and this is a huge injustice. So whatever um, decision comes out of intense community um, input and participatory decision making. I think we need to really put uh, be firm about the need for the military to rehabilitate and uh, clean up the lands that it has contaminated, and that our state shouldn't have to foot the bill for any of it because they enjoy use of those lands for free. Um, they owe it to us financially, but also just ethically, because um, that's sacred aina, that's unceded land for Native Hawaiian. Um, yeah. All right, I hope I have this correct. I think, John, you're next. Thank you. What are ceded lands? 1.8 million acres. In 1898, the monarchy transferred that land to the United States for the benefit of the Hawaiian people. There was never full agreement. That land was set aside for the people. We should charge the military fair market value lease, use those funds to benefit the people of Hawaii. Alaska has its oil, we have our sunshine and our land, and our land is limited. The money received from fair market lease from the United States government should be used for our education and should be given to the people of Hawaii with a focus on Native Hawaiians, some who have waited so long and have died waiting for their homes. There was that huge case last year where $300 million were given back to the people who are on those waiting lists. Time is our enemy. We need to act now and we need to act fast. Make the USA pay their fair share, that's it for the benefit of the people of Hawaii. Thank you. Thank you very much, John. All right, Kevin, I think you're next. Yeah, so um, I, I have a lot of concerns with it. Um, I think most of uh, of my concerns are similar to Tina's. I think the, the way um, the land has been treated um, over the last, you know, all, all of those decades, um, is a concern for me. Um, I think it goes back to uh, what those neighborhoods think is best for them. Uh, but at the same time, I, I I do see it as a as a revenue source, not not necessarily from the leases, but from the residents that are brought in there, and then the use that um, comes out of the, that land. Um, but it's it's not it's not okay for them to 
the military to just use the lands as they see fit um without any any repercussions that's um something that uh as a Hawaiian myself I feel uh very strongly about but um it's it's also part of uh you know my understanding is that there is a portion of it that they are supposed to maintain the land um and I think a bunch of that is enforcement so uh I I would really like to look at these but I think um like it, sh it should be up to the, the residents in those areas to make the final call. Thank you very much. Corrine, I think it's your turn now. Thank you. Thank you. Sorry about the confusion. Um, I think everybody is on the same page with this. We just have a little bit different ways of expressing it. Uh, I come from a military family. My dad was Air Force. My grandfather was Navy. Um, but I think that the military has to be a good neighbor. And the the fact that we have poison land here just breaks my heart. And um, I honestly think that I, I would have to, de de to defer to the people who are affected by these areas and also defer to the Native Hawaiians because we're all guests here, including the military. And if that community is really against keeping those leases, then I would have to fully support that. Thank you. Thank you very much. And then James, your response, please. Yeah, um, I th yeah. again, I think we're all on the same page pretty much. Uh, I used to be stationed at Schofield. I was a military police. So I used to patrol Schofield, Fort Shafter and other army owned um, property. Uh, and there's a lot of property that really is just sitting vacant. They're not doing anything with it. Uh, they just hold it just because. Um, I think in today's environment, uh, you know, our technology is so advanced that I think we should really look at like scaling down. And I think that the military itself, if they're not actively using land that they are leasing, then there should be some sort of deal where we can cut that land out. Um, because even if you look at something like the landfill, you know, struggling to find where to put a new landfill, we need a new landfill. Um, that's just a fact. Um, and if you look at like housing, we need housing. Well, if the military would give back some of the land, we could possibly build, you know, more affordable and low income housing on those parcels. So uh, for those reasons, I'm not for renewing any leases, not not until we look at all these aspects. Thank you very much, Jean. 